Hello everybody and welcome back if indeed you are back watching yet another of these conversations with our special guests of the Australian Musical Theatre Festival in 2022. Um, I'm so delighted today. Uh, I don't only like just bring my friends to the festival but mostly I do. I just happen to have very very talented friends and I get to introduce you to one of those uh, in just a moment. Before I do so I just want to take the moment that I always feel is so useful to just ground myself in remembering and acknowledging the traditional owners of the land that I am on at the moment, the Boomerang and Wurundjeri people of the Eastern Kulin Nation, and also to the traditional owners of the land in Lutrilita, Tasmania as well, where our festival is going to be held. Um, to take the moment to remember that for many, many thousands of years, people have sung their songs, and danced their dances, and told their stories on this land. And it's a great privilege uh, to be here, to be on these lands and to continue that tradition. And we're on separate lands at the moment in, in all of this land of, that we're on, but um, we used to be in, not only on the same lands, but in the same house. Uh, so Jennifer Pierce, my amazing friend Jennifer Pierce, uh, was an <laughs> <laughs> You've got an incredible bio of all these amazing shows here in London, all over the world, but I know her as my flatmate. Um, so uh, I, I was uh, present for many lessons that in fact in the industry when I'm often auditioning people come in like I've met you before and they go oh yeah I used to come into your living room and sing and so I mean half the industry have learned or are learning from Jennifer Pierce through her amazing vocal studio in Sydney uh, so and I'm so thrilled that Jennifer's going to come down to uh, Launceston this year not only to teach, but also to be in some shows. So welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> no so longer nice. in our, well, our old flat used to be called endearingly the Clavelli Cabaret Room. So it was indeed. The how far we've come to now a whole festival that is no longer <laughs> the Clavelli Cabaret Room. It started small. We had probably had the idea back then, but here we are. Yeah. Um, Jennifer, look, you are, I mean, anybody who is in the industry who, you know, is uh, wanting to be wanting to be in the industry, in the industry around musical theatre and uh, working up audition songs, looking at vocal technique. I mean, it, it's kind of like, you know, they talk about six degrees separation. Everyone seems to be learning from you. Um, tell me a bit about, we'll talk about your performing career in a sec, but tell me a bit about your studio and where that came from, like how you set that up. When did you know you were a teacher? How did that happen? So... I, for a long time, kind of had these two parallel careers going where I was still performing a lot and then I was teaching during the day or I would come in in between shows on a Wednesday between the matinee and the evening performance and someone in the cast would be like, Jen, can you just help me with my audition song? Or um, I'm struggling with the, this thing in my voice or there would be like a chat in the dressing room where someone wanted to know something and would ask me a question. And I got to the point where as much as I loved performing and doing shows as well, that was the thing I was looking forward to in my day where I was like, oh, I'm coming in two hours early to uh. teach some lessons in the dressing room and then I'm, then I'm going to do the show. And so I remember even being in London, I was touring in a play and I would come back each, I was doing week to week touring in London, which is kind of more of a hectic schedule. And I would come back on my job on Sunday and teach six students in a row and then go to the next city on my tour. Yeah, and it was a thing to keep that ticking over while I was still doing performing. And I, there was a time where I was the mad woman who was teaching in the day and then doing the show at night. <laughs> and then um, that there were those two things kind of travelled along together. And then I, I got to a point where I was like, oh, this is the thing that that really lights me up, and and what I'm creating here. And performing still does light me up as well. But a, a thing that I was, was building and, and felt empowered by. And so that just gradually over time, the balance kept getting heavier in the teaching department. And I remember always having an identity crisis about that going, but if I'm a teacher, does that mean I'm not a performer? Oh. And, and my teacher and mentor, a, a wonderful teacher in New York, who you know well, who you work with, Neil Seema, said to me, well, why can't you be both? Like, it doesn't have to be a choice that says if you are a teacher means you're not a singer anymore or if you're a singer you can't be like we, we all contain multitudes and we can be many things and that balance can shift in and out as much as you want and then I found myself particularly in the last I don't know six or seven years 
feeling really fulfilled in focusing on my teaching and on my studio and a, a balance that suits my life and what I love. So I, I teach at NIDA and Brent Street as well. Um, I'm also doing a course at the Hub in Sydney at the moment. So I have these kind of outside things and then my lovely little studio here in Bellevue Hill where people come and, and sing and join. Beautiful. I love that. And, you know, I do remember because we had a similar thing where I was kind of going, people were asking me to fix things about a, being a director, essentially. And I'm like, oh, I, you know, and I was just thinking as you were talking about that with lovely Neil Seymour as well, thinking, is it always or is it never? And yeah, thing of holding both. You yeah. know? And I find it helps as well to be a performer, you'd be a better teacher, to be a teacher, you'd be a better performer. You know, they kind of go. hundred percent. And I think that's one of the things that really helps me as a teacher is that like, I'm a total voice nerd. Like I'm all about all of those things, but also because singing in our instrument is really about a body mind voice connection. We're not just talking about it at a larynx level or, or at the, at the nerdy level. It's the, the emotion of it and, and all the things that are going on. And I know what it's like to walk into an audition room. I know what it's like to not get stuff. I know what it's like to be struggling with sickness and still have to perform or any of those things. And so I just feel like I can empathize with people because I'm like, I haven't read about how that feels. Like I know how that feels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And you know it from so many performances, like you've just been in everything. <laughs> when people need the high note, they go, Jennifer Pierce, you're in the, <laughs> thing at the moment. Um, I was looking and, and remembering all of the shows you've done, you know, thinking, because I, I mean, I was lucky enough to see you on the stage in London as well. Yes. I happened to be there when you were in shoes over there. Mm -hmm. um, you just toured with Masterclass around England. Uh, and then of course here, there was Mary Poppins and there was Sunday the Park with George. Yes, that's where we, where we met, in fact, Sunday the Park with George. Oh, my gosh, that's true. Hatpin, which we also did together, which was yes. an Australian musical. Um, uh, what's, what's in all of the, and many of those production company shows that I know you did so many yep. um, with, with Roger Hodgman, who was one of our guests last year at the festival. Yeah. Um, with, have you got a favourite? Have you got a favourite musical that you did or...? Oh. It's a tricky one because there are many and for lots of different reasons. I, it's probably Jerry Springer. So I didn't go the opera. It was a short run. It was one of these one-off little things. And I think the people that did it all saw it really remember, remember it. Mm -hmm. It had this insane cast I think because it was such a short run. It was at the concert hall at the opera house. Mm -hmm. We rehearsed it in something like two or three weeks. It was very short. And then it was on Blink and You'll Miss It, but the cast they assembled was just off the charts. There's something about that piece that isn't for everybody, but just very much appeals to my sense of humour. Mm. And I, I felt so challenged by it because it is really hard music. It's a really hard scene. Yeah. But I also just remember it being incredibly challenging, but so rewarding and joyous. And I also met some people doing that process that is really what prompted me to move to London. So my dear friend, Martin Lowe, who was the musical director on that, I met there and when we finished, he was like, you should come to London. And I was like, what are you talking about? And then we finished and I was like, oh, I, I don't have my next show booked. Maybe I will go. And, and when I got to London, he was very much my fairy godfather and yeah. looked after me. And then when I ended up doing shoes and things like that, a lot of it came via Martin and I just, yeah. Which is amazing, you know, like, and you talk about that. It, it is, you know, so much of a career in the theatre is about relationships and about mentoring and about connections and those sorts of things. And that's something that I hope, I certainly felt it last year, that the Music Theatre Festival does in Tasmania as well, is that you have connections. Like for all of us, we're a community, we're all pursuing the same sorts of things to come together and connect. And for young people, I know um, Callum Francis uh, last year, uh, took many, several people who and just went, okay, let's just work out what the pathway is because you're really great and let's kind of continue this beyond the festival. I think that's really important. Even also, um, you know, when I think about Songs for New World, which you're going to be in, uh, I'm co-directing that with Jack Lark and everyone in Tasmania knows Jack Lark. He's like, you know, when you walk around like um, the city with Rob Mills and everybody just starts <laughs> everybody, to- Hey, Millsy, yeah. Everyone, Millsy, Millsy. It's like, yeah. I always think it's the start of Beauty and the Beast where people pop out of windows and go- Bonjour. Oh, sure. Jack yeah. Lark, <laughs> right? 
and Jack Lark, and he's famous for many reasons. He's a fabulous theatre practitioner, but he's also um, he's part of Lark Gins and and whiskey. Oh, yeah, oh, I don't know. So rehearsals are particularly <laughs> fun. Um, and you know, he started at the festival. I met him at the festival. Uh, he was in my class, and now we're directing pieces together. And he's got his own company. And it's like it's. I think those things are really really important. And we're going to talk about songs for New World in a second. I think the other thing about Jerry Springer is it, it's such a um, you know, I, I think about some of the pieces you've done, really traditional pieces, Fiddler on the Roof, The Sound of Music, Pirates of Penzance, that kind of work. And sometimes we can um, categorise a soprano in a particular way. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something really refreshing about um, Jerry Springer in that it's a real gutsy soprano. Um, yeah. In the festival itself, I want to celebrate, like part of the reason why I'm so excited about people hearing your voice is because you are a soprano. I mean, you sing those notes. And it feels like as music theatre has uh, kind of lent more and more into pop styles, it's been unclear where that fits. And mm -hmm. it's such a, it's such a, I want all of the, all of the young sopranos out there to go come and listen to Jen Pierce, come and work with Jen Pierce and celebrate that part of your voice because you've yeah. done so many amazing things in your career. And um, I mean, do you, do, are there particular roles that you still want to play or particular sopranos? Of course. Of yeah. course, but the thing that, I mean, the thing about Jerry Springer that I loved and it, it, it knocked on into shoes, it, they're both written by a wonderful composer called Richard Thomas, who really dines out on the idea that classical singers doing very irreverent things is funny. And it, and it is. So classical singers swearing but singing beautifully is funny. And the idea that legit sopranos who, you know, wear beautiful gowns and stand there and, and sing beautifully is lovely but also I was like but I'm like I'm funny <laughs> I I like to play and and so having the the space to do that yeah. was was really important to me and I mean it, it is an idea of identity as casting evolves everywhere I think it's really important that for a long time we all thought that when we went and listened to a cast recording or we saw a musical that the way to get that job was to look and sound like that person. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think that's true anymore. I'm not interested in going and seeing the exact same cookie cutter thing each time. We go, each of us is a unique individual. And I I was really encouraged, thankfully, by, by Neil, my teacher, and I try to encourage my students as well to go, yeah, but what's your version of that? Like, mm -hmm. I, I have wonderful idols, like I adore Kelly O'Hara or Audra McDonald or Laura Benanti. And so I can be inspired by them and their and their beautiful choices, but I will only ever be a second rate Kelly O'Hara, but I can be a first rate me. And so I go, what do I bring to this? And particularly I'm five foot eleven, I'm very tall. So I spend a lot of time going, I'm I'm too tall to play Christine in Phantom. Like I'm not the ingenue. I don't look like the ingenue. And then I thought, yeah, but but what's my version of these things? Like what what is what does my leading lady look like? Mm. Mm. And the minute I started owning that and I stopped going into audition rooms trying to be what I thought they wanted me to be or wanted me to be and just went, well, this is who I am and this is what I do and this is what I love, then I started working and people went, well, we'll we'll make it work. One of my favourite phrases, this is a Martin Lowe phrase, he said, we'll make the dress fit the girl, not the girl fit the dress. <laughs> yeah. So, so why would we fit ourselves into the dress? Like, we'll, we'll make you the dress. So same thing, really, and it's a choice. You go, this is what I have to offer and this is who I am. It's not a, a copycat of what someone else is doing. Yeah. This is how I respond to this text. I'm singing with my voice. I'm singing I'm making my choices about what I think this is, is about and how this makes me feel rather than trying to be what we think people want us to be. It doesn't work and it's not very fun. I was about to say, I was about to say, it also at a certain point doesn't get very fulfilling if you do that. And that's yeah. what I love about everything. I mean, it's part of the reason you're a great teacher. You're a vocal wizard. So you know what to do with this apparatus here, but you're speaking to the artistry of people. And, and I, I just want to, you know, I, I hope that, you know, it's so rare that something like the festival brings together so many amazing people. And while some people, you know, may know some of them, I go, oh, I know Philip Cost because he's on the Les Mis video. That's where he's on. <laughs> um, yes. But, you know, like it, it's so important. You know, I came from Newcastle, as you know, 
sometimes we were in our own world so much that it was like it was like who's this person and and uh and so to have class with you is going to be so exciting and that sounds amazing i want to talk about a couple of performances you're doing as well so yep. uh actually i've even got the flyer you see that <gasps> songs for new world it's backwards but that's the flyer um songs for new world so yes. this piece by jason Rock brown you're joining us with i'm so excited about Thank this you. piece and about us doing a musical uh and having like all of our incredible headliners there including yourself and also these you are going to be bowled over when you meet these um there's this great story a few years ago that Gemma ricks and queenie van der zandt were downstairs uh, at the princess theater and sam hammersley who you meet she's in um, songs for new world was singing something, I think, when we were Rock You, and they ran up onto the stage and went, who is that? It's like, <laughs> that's what it's going to be like for you, like the constant, like getting up, having a sing, and then just seeing everybody yep. around you. Um, so tell us, what song are you going to sing, Jen? What, who, what are you doing in Songs for New World? So, I mean, after much debate, I requested many things, and uh, we arrived at, you and I are doing a duet. We're doing I'd Give It All For You. Have we ever done a duet before? I mean, we've, worked, we've done shows together before, but I don't know if she'd done before. It's not a duet, not as such, not like this. It's a beautiful no. song about, it's you exciting, know, isn't it? Yeah, about a relationship that uh, has had a break, if you like, and, and then reconnecting and, and seeing what the loss was in the break. Um, so, you know, the idea, you know, it's going to start with Paulini and then just go, you know, get, just have all these extraordinary people. And by the end, we'll all be sitting on the stage and I think you'll have a really wonderful time. It's great music. Yeah. And I'm really excited about it too, because obviously traditionally Songs for New World is, is done as a four-hander. You guys somehow managed to get the wonderful permission to open that up to a, a larger concert, which I think is only going to enhance it in a sense of community and, and coming together, which is really at the heart of what the piece is about. So. Yeah. And I think particularly now, and we do have permission, so you don't have to go, oh, did you get No one's stressed. Jason yeah. Jackson <laughs> Brown did say yes, it's fine. Um, it's, uh, you know, I think when you do a show, you have to think about what is it, what does the show speak to now? And mm -hmm. uh, Songs for a New World in, in light of um, 2022, where it feels like we're in a new world, not necessarily, um, you know, there's a lot of conflicting stuff around the world. You're only going to watch the news. Um, the idea of hope. The idea it's a really positive message in the show and so i'm so pleased that mm. um, you're going to join us for that and it also makes me feel old that already the notion of we are in a revival of songs for a new world like when <laughs> i was at uni it was the new hot new show but isn't that what to revive something is it's to to bring new life to it and we look at it with the lens of 2022 and the world we live in is different to the one that it was 20 years ago and 20 years before that and Absolutely. And we're so, and, and I think that is part of our job. It's part of, I mean, I keep bringing it back, but part of the reason you have a festival of music theatre is to interrogate and look in, in a new way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this will be great. It's the first musical we've done at the festival and the, the orchestra, we've got a full, the full orchestra will be there. It's going to be beautiful. So you'll be running from a class. You'll have just taught one thing. And it's so funny because I know it in my head because I've done it, but you're like, okay. Um, and then the following. I did look at my schedule the other day. I was like, oh, there's a lot, isn't there? That'll be fun. <laughs> It's a bit like that for all of us. Yeah. It's a whirlwind for the students, for the for the guests. It's all a bit it's all a bit crazy, but it's a, kind of a fun element of that. And part of the festival is there's a festival bar. So at the end of the night, you get to sit around and go, "How is that? And what do we do better? And how do we solve this?" The follow you won't be at the festival bar the following night because it's a late night performance. It's actually from ten o'clock in the Earl, which is on. I the might Friday need a little. Night. I might need a little afternoon nap before that one. That's all right. <laughs> I've actually tried to schedule them. Funnily enough, you, you <laughs> tried to schedule them. Um, so that night is uh, a, a night called "Here's to the Ladies." So what do you know? It's by John O'Hara. Yeah. Do you know John? I do. Yeah, of course. You know. Hilarious. Brian. So um, t tell us what you know about that, and I'll correct you if you say anything wrong. Okay. Oh, I need the marketing plug now. As far as I'm concerned, it's a salute to the great divas and pick whoever diva. I haven't picked my diva yet. Oh, I'm going to make it someone fabulous. Maybe it'll be any of those women I just mentioned, Audra or Kelly or... Exactly. I mean, as as John said the other day, I mean, it's a pretty open brief. I mean, yeah. here's for the divas. And it can be, it can, you know, we'll have people doing Ethel Merman, we'll have people doing Patti LuPone, Barbara Streisand, Judy Garland. Yeah. Um, you know, with your extraordinary voice, it could be it could be Julie Andrews, it could be Barbara Cook, it could be any of those great women of the theatre. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, and so what happens, Jen, is this 
you know, I'm, I'm telling Jen as I'm telling all of you, the Earl Art Centre is behind the Princess Theatre. So there's a whole bunch of events that night. Um, there's a, a beautiful piece called Ghost Light, which is about the ghosts of the Princess Theatre, where you go through on a tour and the people in the stories sing and it becomes a concert by the ghost light. It's really beautiful. Um, at, at the same time, there's another concert going on called the Hope Concert, which is um, all stories of hope uh, and using spoken word, music and dance and improvised, right? So that's kind of like a whole other world of music theatre, using the elements of music theatre. And then we all show up at this venue, that the Earl Art Centre. And most people in um, Launceston would know it as a kind of black box theatre. But uh, we, we turn it into a cabaret venue and uh, all, all of our wonderful performers are going to be there singing and you as well if you yes. want to come. Because Absolutely. if you want to get up and have a sing, they can just bring sheet music. You know the amazing Amanda Hodder. Do you, you know Amanda I Hodder? I don't. Amanda Hodder, well, you must have just missed each other in the industry. She is um, quite extraordinary. She's in Hobart now. Amazing MD. Um, she will be MDing that. Uh, and it's always a crazy, wonderful night. And then, of course, we've got the... Sound of Musicals, which is our big concert where we celebrate musical theatre and all of musical theatre. I mean, we, we celebrate the Jerry Springers and the South Pacifics and everything in between. So, um, look, we can't wait to have you there. And also, it's really nice to have connection to, you know, as you say, you teach at Brent Street, you teach at NIDA. You are at the cutting edge of all of these, you know, the, the practice of musical theatre. So we're so excited to, have you been to Tasmania before? I have, I've been once. Launceston? I, yes. So I drove from Hobart, Bruni Island, and then drove up to Launceston and then went down and stayed near St. Clair. So, mm -hmm. but I haven't done kind of the West Coast. So huh. after the festival, might do a bit of that. There's so much to see. Um, yeah. There's so much to see. We've got an event this year also called um, Made in Tasmania which is Tasmanian singers um, and Tasmanian produce, like food and wine, Ooh. in the gorge. Oh, I think you've got the afternoon. You may have the afternoon off, in which case get up there and have that. And have some cheese. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. It's that is my so, pleasure. I can't wait. So great to have you at the festival. We can't, we can't wait. And everybody, you know, there are, there's obviously a schools program which Jen's involved with, but there's also our regular program. You can get one-off um, uh, classes or you can get for the whole stream so you can go if you feel like you're okay I could do all four of the beginners classes there's always a an acting class a singing class a dancing class and a combination class um, you can do all four and get a discount you'll see Jen there it's it's these kind of events that bring people together inspire people um, Jen I just wanted to uh, I wanted to give you the last word because I've talked a lot um, what do you think are the great qualities of a teacher as such like what do you you've talked about Neil you've talked about even in a way, Martin, who was a, a musical director, yeah. sort of sits in that world as a teacher and or a mentor. What do you think of those qualities that are important? Um, oh, it's such a, it's a big question. The ability to listen and to remember that actually it's not about me. I remember when I was a very early teacher, I would be exhausted because I was trying to do it for the student, right? And so I would feel like I would be doing six singing lessons in a day rather than going, actually, you need to do it. Yeah, we're not thinking about singing, we're here to do singing and I'm here to support you and listen and be the ears that you need and to help guide you through it. But ultimately, it's to support you doing it because it's about the student. Makes sense, of course. We're in service in a way and yeah. that, that's the thing, yeah. Because there will be also singing teachers there who will come along and be part of your class as well, which is always really wonderful to connect with local singing teachers. Thank you so much, Jennifer Piers. Okay. You're amazing. We can't wait to see you down in uh, Tasmania for the festival in May. And thank you. Mwah. See you then. I look forward to seeing you then. Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight I see you broken and beat Head pulled down over your eyes Every part of you wants